Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Study with Divya, where we dive deep into the world of finance and business strategies. Today, we have an exciting topic on our hands, techniques of capital budgeting. Before we jump into the techniques, let's quickly revisit what capital budgeting is. Here capital refers to long-term assets used in production, while a budget is a plan that outlines projected expenditures during some future period. Thus, the capital budget is a summary of planned investments in long-term assets. And capital budgeting is the whole process of analyzing projects and deciding which ones to include in the capital budget. These decisions can have a significant impact on a company's financial health, so it's crucial to use effective techniques to evaluate and select the right projects. 1.NET Present Value NPV. The Net Present Value NPV, tells us how much a project contributes to shareholder wealth. When you have future cash inflows you discount all those future cash inflows to their present values. And that will be the total present value of inflows from that you subtract the initial amount of investment or. If your cost of the project is also scattered over the period you bring all the outflows to their present value so the present value of all the inflows. Minus the present value of all the outflows would give you the amount of net present value. NPV implications, if NPV is positive it indicates that investor is earning more than expected. If NPV is negative it indicates that the investor is earning less than expected if NPV is zero it indicates that investor is earning exactly what is expected. If NPV is negative the investment proposal should not be accepted because rate of return of the project is less than the expected rate of return. If NPV is zero the investor should accept the investment proposal because the investor still earns that rate of return which is expected by such investor. Let us move ahead and discuss the next concept ahead that is concept of IRR. What we call as internal rate of return so please carefully try to understand the concept first. This technique calculates the discount rate at which the present value of cash inflows equals the present value of cash outflows. In simpler terms, it's the rate of return a project is expected to generate. We can also understand this way. A positive NPV indicates that the project is providing you return more than what you expected. I would rather say a rate of return more than what you expect. A negative NPV on the other side indicates a rate of return that is generated by the project is less than what you expect. In other words project is not capable of providing you a rate of return that you expect so what would happen when the NPV is zero. When NPV is zero we will say that the project is capable of generating exactly that rate of return which is expected by the company. So point is very clear if rate of return generating capacity of the project is greater than the expected rate of return. It will result into a positive NPV if the return generating capacity of the project is lower than the expected rate of return. The project will provide you a negative NPV if the return generating capacity of the project is exactly matching with the rate of return that you expect. It will give you zero NPV and NPV is the surplus over and above your expected rate of return. Now if you want to find out what is the rate of return that the project can generate. In other words you want to find the return generating capacity of the project that means you are targeting the computation of this internal rate of return. Because internal rate of return indeed means the same that is the rate of return generating capacity of any project. Now point is very clear if you are trying to determine that internal rate of return you should select a discounting rate through which the NPV gets exactly zero. Now there is no device available where we can compute that IRR directly. Therefore the only method available in this planet is trial and error method that means you try computing NPV at any random discounting rate. A 
higher IRR indicates a more attractive investment. Moving on to the payback period. This method measures the time it takes for the initial investment to be recovered from the cash flows generated by the project. While it's a straightforward technique, it doesn't consider the time value of money. Now, let's talk about the profitability index. This ratio compares the present value of future cash inflows to the initial investment. A pie greater than 1 indicates a potentially profitable project. It's a handy tool for ranking multiple investment opportunities. And there you have it, folks. These are just a few of the many techniques used in capital budgeting. Remember, the key is to consider multiple methods to get a comprehensive view of your investment decisions. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for more finance-related content.